Okay, hi, uh, morning ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going to present uh, on our documentary. So firstly, let me introduce myself. I am Nabil, the director. We have Shabil and Yamin, the producers, and then Palani, the editor. Shabil, the, produ Shabil, the production designer, and last but not least, Ray, the cameraman. Okay, so uh, before we start this presentation proper, I just want to know how many of you actually uh, have watched the Malaysia Cup match, be it on television, or actually at the stadium during the early 90s? Anyone? Nice. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> so essentially. No. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. Okay. So essentially, that's what our documentary will be about. So, uh, for those who are not sure about it, the dream team actually is a, a football squad uh, that comprises the likes of Fadi Ahmad, Malik Awab, David Lee, Stephen Tan, Dito Hai, Rafi Ali, and Nasir Nasir. So that's what the documentary uh, is about. Okay. So uh, with that, I present to you the dream team. Who's a diehard fan? 
So yeah, um, he doesn't get as much publicity as the players do. But the thing about him is actually he has been supporting the Lions for the past 40 years. So every single um, international Singapore match he will be there to support. Yeah. Okay, next. Alright, uh, with that also, uh, I also want to say that uh, other members of the Dream Team will also be included inside this uh, documentary, such as Nazri Nase, Ling Tong Hai, Stephen Lee, Stephen Tan, David Lee, Rafi Ali, Kade Ete, and Brian Rich. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, so now uh, we're going to look into the different segments of this documentary. I'll start off with the beginning of the documentary. So, we are introduced to a boy who had this dream to play football, none other than uh, Mareo. So, as a kid, he has always loved and had this passion for football. Uh, at a young age when he was schooling, he was already uh, going to the national stadium to actually sell snacks. So the thing about him is that uh, he didn't like studying. But uh, he would actually request to his teacher to actually uh, leave school early and then say, that, hey, uh, I need to leave school early today because I need to go to the stadium to sell, to work. So, and ironically, his teacher was very supportive of it. Uh. He said, okay, why well, yeah, not? So actually, uh, by working at the National Stadium, he actually gained uh, free access to watch the football matches and uh, as he worked, he can, he can actually watch the match that was being played at one time. So, uh, it was that very moment that uh, piqued his interest to play football. That one day, he, he realised that, hey, I actually want to be that player on the pitch that the fans are cheering for. Yeah. So, uh, as how footballers would start off their footballing journey, I would say, they would start off the school division. So they progress to the ranks to the youth team and then play for a club and then they eventually play for the national team. So the journey wasn't easy for Malik right at the beginning. So at the start he was already told all by his school coaches that hey you know what you cannot play. And why this uh, teachers actually stopped him from playing was because of his small size. He has a small frame as you all might know. So they all thought like no you will never make it in football. You can never play sports because you're so small. But that did not stop Malik from wanting to work hard and Prove his uh, critics wrong. He knew that one day I'm going to prove everyone of you wrong. <coughs> so we kept training and training and worked hard. And then eventually, um, he, Farrah Park United actually took him in as a youth player. And then from there, that's where he started off his footballing career. So three years on with uh, Farrah Park United, actually, at the age of 19, uh, he finally received uh, his first call up to the national squad. So that was uh, the day, October 13, 1980. Jita said she went to him, like, hey, you know what? Uh, I want you to be inside the Singapore National Squad to play in the Malaysia Cup. So that was like, he knew at that point that, like, oh wow, like, this is the start of it. Like, I'm going to pursue this dream and actually prove everybody wrong. So that, the very next day in 1981, Singapore actually reached uh, the Malaysia Cup final. Uh, they were scheduled to face uh, Kerda in the final. However, they lost right at the final hurdle. And that was a match that uh, Malik was in the team, but he was an un unused substitute. So uh, he did not have he wasn't featured in the game, he was just sitting there waiting to be called on, but it never happened. So, um, how he wished that he could have actually made an event on the game, and that could have potentially caused, uh, changed the course of history, but he didn't. Okay, next. So, and then we go to the middle uh, of this documentary. So, uh, after uh, several successful years with Singapore, and then one overseas team with Kuala Lumpur, Malik found himself being a source of inspiration for his team. Basically what happened in 1992 was that he actually just came back from Kuala Lumpur. The team faced a catastrophe. Basically they were relegated to the second division. So what it means for the Lions was that they were going to play in empty stadiums. They lost fans. Fans were like very furious. furious and they really showed their displeasure to the team. That, uh, some, of the, some of the players were actually threatened uh, by the fans. So the fans really, um, they really showed how unhappy they were at the players. So and then it was a moment where uh, Malik could not imagine what happened. Like, like in how many years he's played football, it's actually the worst that has happened to him. So what happened was that the team needed a messiah. So then came in 1993 the return of Singapore's most favorite footballing son, none other than Fandi Ahmad. So Fandi was did not only add star power to the team, but he also added uh, he also came in as a leader. He captained the side and then he promised uh, the minister that you know what? I'm going to return and I'm going to win something for Singapore. I give you my word, I'll do it for you. And then he actually lived up to his promise. In 1993, when they played in the second division, they uh, won the second division title, which secured promotion for them back to the top division. And not just that, they actually uh, reached the Malaysia Cup title in 1993. But still, uh, they, unfortunately, they lost in the final. But that loss did not. Uh, Demoralized the team. Actually, the, the fans started coming, coming back to them. Like, support was start, 
started to pour in really for the fans like wow this team uh, has such an amazing lineup and that eventually came with, uh, came the term dream team so yeah so uh, at that point then people it was a squad that uh, people never have imagined that would happen you have like Van Diyama and then you have the young players like Nazir Nasir Rafi Ali who also are starting already yeah so uh, yeah as I mentioned the fans started coming in already and then that that's where the diehard fan of Bahrain Shim comes in so uh, the Kalang Stadium was a backdrop for the dream team basically and then I'm sure all of you uh, remember the famous Kalang Bay which is like um, a vicious man-made way that displayed the unity of Singaporeans regardless of uh, race, language and religion and it was like just like one big movement around the stadium that actually fended off uh, opposition sides and when away teams come to play in our national stadium it actually unsettled their nerves uh, to play you, the Kalang Stadium became a fortress for the uh, Singapore Lions yeah. Yeah, so and then uh, from then on the dream team received a lot of publicity from the media um, the players were like basically like superstars like everywhere they go people were like mobbing them and then eventually they, they yeah they actually also recorded an album oh, oh that's really bad <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should just stick to the video <laughs> yeah but yeah I, mean, I guess that showed uh, how much publicity they were given at that point in time yeah, next <clears throat> Yeah, so and then uh, we come to the end of this documentary. So, um, so the Lions, uh, that very year in 1994, uh, the morale was on a high, the chemistry was amazing in the team. So uh, they picked up from where they left in 1993. So uh, they won uh, the Malaysia League in 1994 uh, after uh, like a hard fought battle with rivals Kedas, Lamu, Kelantan, everything. But there was still one thing that needs to be done, which was to bring the Malaysia Cup home back to Singapore. So, the last, uh, the final match was scheduled to be played at the Shah Alam Stadium. So, uh, Dai Hat fan Alba Hashim, uh, who also organizes uh, bus trips from Singapore to Malaysia, he receives an overwhelming response from the fans. Like, you know, Alba, I sure want to go, I want to bring my family to watch Singapore at Shah Alam. So, like, he planned like 90 buses full of fans, like, thousands like, went together from Singapore to Malaysia. So, basically, they traveled together, they stayed together, they actually stayed in the same hotel uh, as the Singapore Lions. Yeah. So, uh, come the final match at the Shah Alam Stadium, two thirds of the stadium was actually occupied by travelling Singaporean fans. So, uh, if you are talking about numbers, there's actually uh, 50 to 60,000 uh, of the stadium occupied by Singaporeans uh, compared to the 20,000 occupied by the Baha fans. Yeah. <clears throat> so, as the players marched into the stadium, uh, there were so many thoughts and feelings that were going on in their heads. Uh, um, for some, I would say, for the younger players, like, they felt the weight on their shoulder to actually make, uh, like, this is the time I can make an impression to the Singaporean, this is my time. For Malik and Fani, they were pressured to perform. They said like, hey Malik, it's been a long time coming for us. We are actually at our twilight of our careers right now. And if there's one time that we actually, we can actually have a chance of bringing home the cup, this is it. Yeah, and actually Fandi actually uh, talked to David and said, David, David, I think this is our year. Let's do it. Yeah. So the Lions actually trashed Baham 4-0. Uh, that sent Singaporean fans to ecstasy. And, uh, when the final whistle blew, like, everyone just went nuts at uh, the stadium. Like, <clears throat> like, for Singapore, like, we ended a 14-year drought. Like, finally, after 14 years, we actually brought home Malaysia Cup and the Malaysia League. So it was double. Uh, it was just like icing on the cake. Like and then um, for the players, uh, it was like, after all that has happened in 1992, all those bad times they went through together and then they actually nurtured as a team together and then two years on they actually achieved something for themselves. And then not forgetting for, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say main case study, but uh, for Malik Awab, a boy who actually, I mean a man who actually dreamed to play football, but finally at the twilight of his career, at the age of 33, he would actually finally leave the Malaysia. Dollars, five minutes. So you can take from different different of the match. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is because they had the education yeah. the, 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 the pricing. Can we ask actually uh, what what sort of emotions are you trying to invoke in Singapore through this after film? Uh, emotions. Um okay, uh, for emotion wise I would say for for one part is actually to be minutes to bring back the So when people watch and they look back like wow there was like, a moment like, we can never remember so basically just bring back a lot of memories whereas for the younger generation who might not have heard of these players when they watch um they should have this like fighting spirit like, like, raring to go like you know what i have a dream i'm gonna make sure like, whatever it takes i'm gonna leave that dream so uh this documentary we aim to use 
use it as a source of inspiration, whereby you actually see this place and you hear it from themselves, whereby um, no matter how long the journey would actually take, it will be worth it at the end of the day when you actually realize that you actually live your dream. Would you say that this film uh, is also your personal wish for what you hope Singapore can, can be again? Yes, correct. that's definitely correct. And then, uh, as some of you have mentioned, um, with the newly opened sports hub that's coming up, I think this documentary will actually uh, come out just in time for it. And then, who knows that the current team might actually move their matches from Jalan Besar to the uh, new National Stadium, right? And then, who knows, actually, we might actually fill out the stadium once again. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, my, um, I think what would be useful is very clear actually what is really the intent. Uh, because there are actually other football firms that actually have been made and the effervescence I think basically has been also well captured in those firms as well. But if, if your personal wish is that this firm will allow Singaporeans to be yet again inspired and your wish for what Singapore can become, then I think the anger, uh, anger will be a strong one. You just have find ways to actually bring out that wish for Singapore this year. Because uh, there, are, there, there is risk in this particular firm it's going to be a, a feature of the half bins. Uh, but it's okay because these people may have bins, but actually, if your message is that you really wish that you want to revive this spirit, then the half bins will actually work in your favor. Because it's an area that's needed, there are a lot of films that celebrate that Kalam Rock, uh, an area that has, I don't believe, only in the newspaper you have journalists reminiscing about the past and trying to tell people to fill the stadiums. Uh, our attendance for our local games is on it. And you don't know who the players are in So, uh, hopefully it's a really interesting. It's about telling Singapore we have been there and we can get there again. Yeah. Sorry, Connie, you have a question? Uh, I like the flow of the, of the timeline and just to check out the production timeline, right? What's your duration of shoot and the equipment you'll be using that you hope to be using? Rian? How many days are you just like? Uh, yes. they are, uh, just to clarify, they are all given five days. Oh, five uh, days. This is an academic <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, they are all given yeah. five days. Okay, uh, for, as for equipment, we'll be using uh, the Sony FS 700 because we intend to shoot slow motion uh, for kick about. And then uh, it offers up to 240 frames per second. So it's, we can slow the footage up to like 10 times. So it's quite uh, nice. It's like what you see in the visual treatment. Uh, for the interviews, we plan to use like uh, the uh, the C300, the Canon C300. Yeah. So we'll be using that because of the high resolution, uh, as well as uh, the CINE lens uh, from Canon. Yeah. But if you're using both different brand of system, right? Do you have, uh, they have both different warmer and cooler dome? Are you yeah, doing uh, grading at the end? Yeah, we'll be doing grading. Uh, it's quite common for us to do. And then uh, we'll also be shooting in a flat tone, meaning to say our contrast and uh, all the levels will be put down, so you'll be more equally matched. We'll be using the same brand of lens also, so uh, there won't be much problems in that. Yeah. We have one day for kickabout. We have five days of shoot, so four days will be for the interviews, and one day will be for a kickabout where you gather all the players together. Can you shoot a whole Trafford Hotel kind of that that we showed <laughs> last month? Sorry. You, you know how it's it, right? You can use it as a trailer. You know, okay. It's been uh, something quite humorous. I made some attention. Okay. I think shooting a trailer might be useful for your uh, publicity and all that. I think that I have a trailer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.